Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing our 3JS, uh, let's just call it a course at this point. We're going to be continuing on with our 3JS course by importing exported Blender files into our Webflow project. Now, you might remember a few weeks ago, I did an episode on where to store your external Webflow assets. That could be CSS, that could be JavaScript, but in this case, we're going to be uploading our Blender files, or more specifically, our GLTF files, to those external storages, and I'm going to show you how to then import them into our 3JS scene. So if we take a quick look at what we're going to be creating here, you can see this fox that's got a little animation plan. It's kind of standing on this box here, a bit basic, but when you uh, when you hover over these um, hello, these, these links here, which we set up in a previous episode, you can see it begins to play another sequence of animation. So a lot to get cracking on with in this episode. So uh, let's dive into the code and see what we can come up with. So just a word on file types when it comes to 3JS and 3D in general, really. There are literally hundreds of different file types and they all have their different pros and cons. Some of them are based on performance, some of them literally just what information is contained within those files. A lot of them are stored in JSON format, whether you're embedding the textures in that file or whether you're referencing external ones. It gets messy, but what we're going to be doing here is using a standard that's kind of gained a lot of traction, a lot of a lot of pieces of software support it and export it and all the rest of it. Um, and it just seems to be a one size kind of fits all for a lot of situations. Uh, but just know that as you get more deeper into 3JS code, you're going to be more sensitive to what file types you use for various different circumstances. But for our intents and purposes, GLTF is going to be the file type that we use for our project. Might not necessarily be the best solution, but that's what we're going to go with because it's just the easiest to work with. So here we have the file that we were working in last time. It's slightly adjusted because I thought I could clean it up and do a little bit uh, um, of adjustment, but what you'll do, you'll, you'll find a link down to the code pen in the description, and you can uh, check out what we've what I've changed and all the rest of it. But it essentially is doing the same thing. Now, the first thing we need to do is the loader that loads in that's responsible for loading in GLTF files is actually a big bit of code. So we need to take we need to import a separate module to enable us to do that. So in our imports here, we want to add a new line. And once again, this is the mapping. So you can name this whatever you want. It, I think you can name it whatever you want. I'm not too sure, but either way, this works just fine. And you're gonna want to, the code that you get from 3GS's website, you're gonna want to replace with the current version number so that they match. And that links to examples, GSM, and then in our imports, then we can import that by going import, GLTF loader three add ons loaders GLTF loader log it GLTF loader and we should find that we have our loader imported. The next aspect is where you're going to get your model from. So I'm not going to go over how to export your models from Blender. There's plenty of tutorials. I'll even find a tutorial on that that I'll link to below that tells you what settings you can use and all the rest of it. But it's pretty simple to export these things. Um, and uh, maybe you won't actually be working on them anyway, so you can just request a GLTF file. But what I will tell you though, is that if you go to 3js.org slash editor, you can import your files into this basic, very, very basic 3JS editor. And this is a good way to test whether the file actually works. So if I grab my Fox here and bring it in, uh, where is it? There we go, nice and big. You can see that that's working fine. And uh, all we need to do is add a ambient light in here. Make it white. Whack up the intensity. And here we have our fox. So you can see that it all works. And then you can start to actually manipulate things. I've had to add new materials to my files or just change the positions of things. So 3GS Editor is a really good way just to add the kind of final touches to, to your file or maybe change it without involving uh, a designer. Other thing I'll point you to is the GLTF transform library. And what this does is it really, it, it compresses and, and 
optimizes your GLTF files uh, to make them smaller, to do various other things. All, all I've ever used this for, if I go to CLI here, I've in, in, installed it and then I just uh, run GL transform on a file. And I think what I tend to do is, these are all options. So when you state this, you can then, oh, here we go. WebP texture com com compression. And I've, comp uh, when there's PNGs, they can be massive or, uh, or even JPEGs really, you can convert those to WebP. And if that's maybe if there's some optimization that further optimization that need to be done, but you can run through these things, uh, these options and just have a little look. And again, maybe we don't need to worry about it too much here, but the very, very basic one would be WebP. So I'll put a link to the command line that you would use after you, in, if, after you install the uh, CLI tool, and then you can sort of compress your files even further. So we've got our Fox file. Um, I, I got that from the, where did I get it from? I got it from the Kronos Group sample models here. And I chose this one because it's got some animations bound to it and it's got um, a couple of different GLTF file types, but it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna use probably the, GL, the standard GLTF one here. Uh, but it works just the same with any other GLTF file except Draco. But then again, there are many, many different formats, file formats. So you just use the loader that's appropriate to that file format. So we've got our Fox and I've uploaded this to AWS and I've got a public link to that. I don't need to show you how to do that. Go reference the other video that I made on uploading your, uh, or choosing the, the, the service that you use to upload your external assets. So with that, I've uploaded it. Uh, if I go and grab my URL, what we're going to do, we're going to, let's put it here. We're going to go load Fox. And this is where our kind of breaking up of the functions comes in clutch. Load Fox. And we're going to want to make a new instance uh, const of the um, GLTF loader equals new. GLTF loader. So we have our instance here, and then we're going to want to go GLTF loader dot load, and then we're going to want to pass in our URL. So I have that here. I'm just going to paste it in there, and then we're going to we get access to three functions. The first function is on the success of the um, of the load. So I'm going to just type success in there. The second function will be the uh, progress, so log progress, and that might be handy for a loading bar or something like that. And the third one will be on the error, so error. And in the success function, we get access to the object that gets loaded. So what I'm gonna do here is once again, I'm gonna console log uh, gltf file, and then I'm gonna refresh that, and hopefully we'll see progress success and then this is the actual object that we're going to be working with this is the fox but you'll see we've not added it to our scene yet as you need to do with every single FreeJS project you need to add everything that you use to the scene but just before we do that let's just take a look at the object itself so you can see that as i said earlier we've got animations to play with here we also have a scene and scenes as individual objects now you can nestle in here and Essentially, you've got access to everything that you would expect. If you want to know the scale, uh, if you want to manipulate the scale, you can treat this as any other object now as if it was created inside of 3JS. Um, and it's a simple case of going this.scene.add gltf.scene. Refresh the page. And once again, you can't see anything. And if you remember rightly, then we need to add some lights. And I'm just gonna add some ambient lights um, into this scene because ambient lights just light everything from every direction and we don't need to worry about shadows or positioning or anything like that. So I'm just gonna add lights. And you can have multiple lights. Maybe we can do a lights tutorial. Um, so const ambient light equals new. Three dot ambient light. And once again, this dot scene dot add ambient light. Save that and refresh. 
and now you can see our fox and it is huge. What I want to do, as, as you, if you remember from our example, is I, I want to be able to place this uh, cube, uh, sorry, place this fox on the cube. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap both of these inside of a group and uh, this means that when we move our mouse, we're going to move the group as opposed to just moving the box and then moving the fox kind of separately. So the way we're well, actually, let's sort the scale out of this fox for now. GLTF.scene.scale.set. And we'll set this to 0 0.03 here. 0 0.03, 0 0.03, GLTF. And that's a more manageable size. We're going to now create our group for the box. So where's our box? Create box. Let's create a group. This dot group, and it's a group is created just like any other 3JS thing. 3 dot group. And then you can go um, this dot group position. So we're moving the position, and then we are going to go to this dot group and the box and then add the box uh, the group to the scene. Refresh that and we should see no changes. Perfect. And now we're going to this dot group add that and we should find that absolutely it's on there. So we now need to move that fox up a little bit. GLTF dot scene position dot y equals we want to move it up so we want to do 0.5 perfect that looks good that looks good now we're going to want to rotate instead of just the box we're going to rotate the group what we'll find now is that our fox will move with our group because this is totally practical I think that's it as far as getting kind of getting the file in and and playing with it and manipulating the scale and all the rest of it. So we're in a really good position here. So now let's look at the animations that we have access to. Now the first thing you want to do is add a mixer to the to the, the project itself. So if I go new animation mixer, and then we want to add the gltf.scene to that mixer. Now we want to reference the individual actions themselves. We want to load in the individual actions to be able to mix between them. I'm just going to copy some code in there. We've got action one, which is going to be the first action. If I remember rightly, there's there's three actions. So if I, in fact, let's just let's just use the uh, just mix between one and two for this session. And I think that's it. We can go to this dot uh, action one dot play, and we save that. And what you'll notice that nothing's kind of happening, and that's because we need to, with every kind of animation tick, we need to update what the what the the frame of the animation. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a clock. This dot uh, clock clack clock equals new three dot clock and that starts when we instantiate this function so it kind of has its own internal clock and then in here we're going to go if uh, this dot mixer so only if there's a mixer because the mixer takes some time to load uh, because we're only creating that when the gltf file loads if there's a mixer then we go this dot mixer dot update And then we go this dot clock dot uh, get delta. I think it's get delta. Have a look. There we go. We've got something playing here. Now we want to be able to mix or or play other other um, other animations here. So what I'm going to do is when we roll over the hello, I'm just going to go play the other animation. What we want to do is we want to fade this animation between the different states. So I've got a function here that I'm going to leave down in the description, but essentially what, what we're go doing is it takes a new action, so a new um, animation that it wants to play, and it takes a duration, but we're setting the default duration to 0 0.2 seconds. We need to set a currently active 
action in order to set the previous action. So let's just do that first in our load of the fox. Um, we're not going to play the action. Instead, we're going to play the. We're going to set the previous action. So this dot. Uh, what was it? What do we call it? Active action. Active action equals this dot action one and then we're going to do this dot active action equals dot play and that shouldn't affect anything we should see everything running fine that's totally cool uh, so now we're tracking the currently active action we set the new action as the current active action we're essentially just uh, queuing up the next action if if it's if the previous action is different from the current action which it more than likely always will be we're going to fade that that previous action out at the given duration and then the new current um, active animation we're just going to reset it and then fade it in and play it okay that's basically what this code is doing so we've got all this this is all fine it's going to be where we hover over uh, where are we going it's going to be here where we actually call that function so if we go this dot what is it fade to action we're going to give it the this dot action two as the action to fade into and then we're going to fade back to the previous action or animation so as you can see we've got a nice smooth we fade out that one and then fade into this one so we have a nice little fading pretty pointless uh, animation so now you know how to fade between different animations and make it look all nice and smooth so i hope you enjoyed this episode this was uh, quite a fun one to research and get going as a word of note i'm trying to uh, improve the full stack agency website so visit full, the full stack agency .xyz, where there's more blog posts and various other things like that so do check out the the website and finally if you want to see any more 3js stuff then do let me know down in the description and until next time Happy no coding.